We've examined the origins and branches of philosophy, seeing that philosophy grows and changes, which is why it is difficult to define precisely. <coughs> it is time to introduce you to Socrates. Socrates lived from 469 to 399 BC in Athens, Greece. He is one of the most famous philosophers ever. Socrates believed philosophy was a living activity. He believed it occurred in live dialogue, and he never wrote a single word. Instead, most of our knowledge about Socrates comes from his student Plato. Plato wrote down everything he remembered Socrates saying. So, we have about 20 dialogues between Socrates and various people. Each Socratic dialogue focuses on a particular idea, like virtue, justice, truth, holiness, or beauty. Each one of them can be divided into three stages. First, Socrates meets someone who claims to have knowledge about a topic, and Socrates praises the person, asking him to share his knowledge. Second, Socrates starts asking questions that seem easy, but these questions grow until they reveal that the person doesn't really have any knowledge about the topic. Finally, Socrates and his conversational partner both admit ignorance. Socrates proposes that they seek knowledge together, and Socrates is turned down. That's it. All Socrates did was ask a bunch of questions people couldn't answer. He rarely, if ever, found good answers to his questions, and some of the people Socrates talked to walked away, became angry, or burst into tears when Socrates revealed their ignorance. While asking a bunch of questions may not sound like a big deal, many powerful people in Athens were offended by Socrates' questions. Socrates was arrested and tried for teaching false doctrines, impiety, and corrupting the youth. Socrates delivers a long speech to the court, which is commonly called the Apology. The speech is funny, sarcastic, and brilliant. Socrates claims that he can't possibly spread false doctrines or corrupt the youth because he knows nothing, and if he knows nothing, how can he teach anything? He also proclaims the unexamined life is not worth living. Even as he is defending his own life, Socrates insults the jury by telling a story to show he is the wisest person alive precisely because he knows that he does not know anything. The jury, consisting of 501 Athenian citizens, finds Socrates guilty, and he is sentenced to death. The sentence is carried out when Socrates drinks a glass of hemlock. What can we learn from Socrates? Be humble. Part of Socrates' point is that you can only learn something if you recognize that you do not already know everything. If you claim to already know about justice, how can you learn what justice really is? Ask questions. Asking questions is the core of philosophy. We cannot learn without asking questions. Asking questions is, in fact, sometimes more important than finding answers. Socrates shows that we may never find answers to some questions, but asking the questions and looking for answers puts us on the path towards understanding and wisdom. The examined life begins with questions. Even if something seems like common sense, do not accept it as true until you have examined it for yourself. Examine answers. Just because you get an answer to a question does not mean that the answer is a good one. Be critical and only accept answers you have analyzed. Don't give up. After Socrates is sentenced to death, he says that he will continue his quest for knowledge by asking the ghosts in the afterlife if they have any knowledge to share with him. Philosophy can be dangerous. Asking questions about everything under the sun may seem pretty innocent, but people can get emotional, defensive, or violent when their ignorance is revealed. This is especially true of people in positions of authority, people who are supposed to have answers. A copy of Euthyphro, 
One of the Socratic Dialogues is included in the learning module for this chapter, as well as a copy of the Apology. Read them and see Socrates in action for yourself. Now, you should have a decent idea of the types of things philosophy examines. Let's move on to learning about each branch of philosophy in detail. In the next two chapters, we will study epistemology, starting with Socrates' student Plato and his famous simile of the line.